Welcome to Anti-Woke and Autistic. Join me on a venture with a fat acceptance influencer as she hunts for a new doctor. Listen to the crazy stuff she says. Get ready with me to go see a new GP. So I have been on the hunt for a good doctor for a while. It's been just like very stressful the last few years trying to be transparent and not let people take my weight. Ugh. Okay, so she says it's been stressful, especially when people take her weight. This is coming from the mouth of a fat acceptance influencer whose many TikTok videos promote or celebrate the size of her body, so she contradicts herself. So if she really likes being fat, if she's okay with it, if she's at peace with being obese, if she's at peace with being very overweight, if she's at peace with all of that, why should it matter if a nurse or doctor checks her weight? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Why should it matter if she's at peace with it? Why should it matter if all her videos, if she really, really truly feels good about being fat and she's truly in a celebration mode, in a promotional mode for her obesity, why, why would she be going through all of this just to find a new doctor. It doesn't make sense. I know I, I kind of sound repetitive here, but these fat influencers, they're the ones who are repetitive, but then they're hypocritical. They contradict themselves all the time. And also just getting blood results is really stressful in a fat body. So I have heard really great things about this uh, doctor I'm going to. And I, I just got to stop this for a moment. If she wants us to take, if she wants people to take her seriously, she could do away with the continuously rubbing her face while she's talking. What kind of, what kind of approach is that? If you want to convince people of something, if you want to be convincing, you want to sway people to the way you think, then don't simultaneously rub your face and cover it from view, which kind of muddles up your words. Most people look at faces when they're listening to someone, all right? And if you're looking at this woman's face, whatever she's doing there, I don't know if that's a concealer, I don't know if that's powder, I don't know what she's doing there, but it's making her a little less clear as far as her speech. And it's not professional. It's not, not that she's professional at all, but it's just very weird. It's unbecoming. Trust that she will be good, but I'm just always nervous because... I've had doctors tell me to my face before that they'll take care of me and they'll make sure they'll be sure to um, that they'll listen to me and tell me what I need. And then they get my blood results and it's like, we don't believe you. So it's just scary. And I know I'm not the only person who deals with this. So just like, no, you're not alone when you have to go to the doctor. Um, yeah, it's uh, very stressful. It's just like so infuriating that you go to the doctor, you're proving that you want to take care of your body and your health in that way. And then to be told that like you don't care about your health or you don't know what you're doing, especially like if you've been fat your whole life, you've done the diets, you've done the exercises, like this isn't new information to anybody in a bigger body. In a bigger body. I hate that. You're not in a bigger body. You are your body. She says she's done all the exercises, all the diets. We don't know that. We don't know what she considers exercise. We don't know what kind of weird or inefficient, dumb diets her parents put her on. She says she's been fat all her life. Well, when you're young, you're dependent on your parents or whoever's taking care of you for your food intake. You depend on them for your food intake. They're, they're the child's food source. A small child, a young child can't just hop in a car and make money appear magically and go shopping and buy food. The food comes from whatever's in the refrigerator that the parent stocks, whatever's in the cupboards or the pantry or whatever the parent buys them when they're out somewhere. So if she was fat growing up, that's on her parents. And if they put her on strange starvation type diets where they cut out food groups or eliminated her favorite foods, that's not sustainable. But at some point, she gets old enough to approach the age of accountability where her responsibility, her accountability becomes increasingly relevant and then you become an adult. And you should try to fix the situation. You should try to mitigate it. 
not with fad diets, not with fat burner pills, not with crazy ideas like thinking that 2,000 crunches a day is going to melt all the fat off your stomach, or walking your little poodle three blocks is going to share off the weight, or holding on to a treadmill and walking so slowly that you can carry on a conversation without any problem is going to torch off all the weight. If that's your idea of exercise, it's no wonder you haven't lost any weight or you were unable to keep it off if you did lose a little bit of weight. No, you did not try everything. You did not try all the diets. You did not do all the exercise. There is no way I'm going to believe that this woman actually tried intense, heavy compound strength training, intense, strenuous, grueling, kick-ass weight workouts, not hours and hours and hours pedaling a stationary bike or hours and hours and hours of pushing a stroller or walking around in the park, just three hours a week of hardcore, grueling, intense weight workouts. Compound strength training means working more than one muscle group at a time, particularly large muscle groups like the legs, the hamstrings, the quads, the glutes, the back and the chest. Hit those hard three times a week for one hour, even 45 minutes. And it'll make a huge difference. It'll rev up your metabolism. There is no way she tried that. I don't believe for a second she tried high-intensity interval training either. Now, a lot of people might say, well, she should spend two hours a day in the pool. Well, there's nothing dangerous or harmful about using a treadmill inclined for doing high-intensity interval training if you're fat. Don't hold on. Go at a pace that's vigorous for 30 seconds or a minute. And if you can't, then slow it down a little bit. Slow down the speed. Find a speed that you could do barely for 30 seconds without holding on. Then lower the incline and walk as a recovery pace for a few minutes. So you should do your primary fat burning and fitness building and lean muscle building exercise on land. Then swim in the pool on your off weight days or, or do a little swimming or bobbing around in the pool after your workout, but swimming laps, that's not for everybody. That's, that's actually difficult for a lot of people, even thin people. It's just, it's just difficult, but it's a lot easier to pick up some weights. So anyways, I went off a, a, a tangent there, but I just wanted to point out that I don't believe for a second this woman has worked out the way she should to optimize fat loss. So again, I've heard great things about this doctor, and I'm going to go in with the mindset that she's going to help me take care of my health in the best way she can um, and know that that is my end goal. Um, I don't want to pursue weight loss, um, but I'm definitely willing to pursue my health. So that's always my goal when I go into these um, appointments. I've had doctors tell me to lose weight without seeing a number on the scale. I mean, yeah, I've seen a mirror. I know I'm in a fat body. But if you don't even have a number to give me, but tell me I need. She said she doesn't want to pursue weight loss, but she wants to pursue her health. The best thing she can do right now, judging by her level of obesity, is to pursue weight loss. However, what's important is that she does it in a sustainable, healthy way, rather than a crash diet or a starvation diet. But the biggest thing she can do, the most important thing she could do as far as pursuit of health is diet, meaning change her diet to something where it will incite weight loss in a safe, healthy way that's easy to stick to. That's something that she could sustain more healthy food, less ultra processed food. But to say she's going to pursue health but not pursue weight loss, that's nuts. That's like saying you're going to pursue good oral health, but you won't brush your teeth. That's exactly what that's like. You're going to pursue a good, healthy set of teeth, but nah, I'm not going to brush my teeth. Absolutely nuts. I need to pursue weight loss, even though I've told you I have a history of disordered eating habits. That's pretty messed up. Like, I've got to try to remember, and I encourage anybody else to remember, to ask doctors if they would tell a thin person the same thing they're telling you when they're giving you medical advice. So just know I'm really nervous about this appointment today. I think it's super important to keep having these conversations about how fat bodies are treated in the medical field. So I will update you guys on how it goes. Wish me luck. Actually, they would. A good doctor 
will find out why somebody is very thin. They'll ask about their eating habits and they'll find out why they're so thin. Yeah, a good doctor will do that. And she talks about her history of eating disorders as though she currently does not have an eating disorder. Well, look at her. She has an eating disorder. You don't get fat without an eating disorder. Maybe she used to have a restrictive eating disorder that made her underweight. Maybe she used to have anorexia nervosa. Maybe she used to have bulimia nervosa. But right now, judging by her looks, she continues to have an eating disorder. She currently has an eating disorder. It's called overeating. It's called binge eating disorder and or compulsive overeating disorder. Or maybe she just overall eats too much based on the wrong cues. For instance, every time she's on the computer or watching TV, she munches and munches and munches thousands of calories. Maybe when she goes out and socializes and is with a bunch of friends, she's consumed 2,000 calories before she knows it. So she currently has an eating disorder. Why is she nervous about the appointment if she's okay in a fat body? These fat acceptance influencers have something not quite right in their heads. Just not quite right. Something's just not right up there. They are hypocrites. They claim to be proud of their fat body. They flaunt their fat body on social media. But then they talk about how fearful they are to visit doctors, how they don't want to see their weight, how it makes them edgy and nervous and uncomfortable, the idea of getting their weight taken, wanting to pursue health, but not wanting to lose a lot of that excess weight. They completely lack logic. Fat acceptance is the antithesis of logic. That is my video for today. Have a great day.